action. My mother is probably one of the most amazing people I've ever met in my entire life. I mean, she's one of the strongest human beings. She ain't physically strong. She ain't finna walk into the room and just grab some heavy thing and move it now. But her presence and the way that she carries herself with so much dignity, I man, I've never met a more person, a person like her. She's so disciplined. The way that she moves in her life, the way that she was deliberate when I was a child, she never left the house being anything less than movie star status. I mean, if you saw my mom, her hair was done. She didn't wear makeup. She was just glowing beauty. And everything about her embodied excellence. And this was my standard of a woman growing up. I mean, and she made sure that I was excellent. Before I ever went to uh, kindergarten, I could read. This was my mom. And so when I go out into the world to go find a wife, I'm looking for a person who's just as excellent or more excellent than my mother. This is what I'm looking for. And then when I find women who they don't want to be disciplined, they don't have any goal. Like once you make a decision, my mother made a decision that she was going to take care of her family to the best of her ability. And she did with so much love and care. And when I ask a woman, can you display that same type of love? She says, I'm not your servant. And I'm like, wait, what? My mom wasn't a servant. She was of service. I mean, the most greatest human beings, Jesus Christ, he was of service. Come on. God is of service. Come on. But they ain't servants. They're powerful people. Yes. And like, man, if you don't use your power to help people, then what are you doing? And when they talk about powerful women, yeah, a woman, you're the most powerful creature next to a man that's ever existed in the history of the world. But how do you utilize your power? Are you choosing to find a man and have a family and to love this family? Or are you competing with me? Because if we really compete, you can't win. Let's be honest, right? I'm probably going to work harder than you. I got more muscle capacity than you. And I'm just more intense than you are because I really want to be great, right? You know what you want? You want a man that's great. But how can you get a man that's great when you say, like, slow down, slow down, wait, what about me? Think about me. Man, if you don't find a way to come help me, Seriously, I think this is one of the belt. Like, this is an important conversation because men are trying to appease women. And since we're trying to appease women, we won't tell you what we really want. And what I want from you is to be the most bestest, supportive, best friend in the history of the world who just lets me do my thing because, baby, I'm on a mission. Do you understand? And he said, I got a mission too. What's your mission? Tell me what your mission is. I'm about to pour my heart out, man, and I'm going to just let the audience know what's up right now because we need to hear this. But the modern woman is misguided, misled, and is taking the family to destruction, period. One, I think the modern woman voice is too loud. Um, we cater to her feelings too much. We have gotten away from traditional values that make society strong. What you think is your weakness is really your strength. You know, we told women to get out of the kitchen. When she was bringing nourishment to her family, we told women that she didn't have to do this or do that and can go at it with her husband when she was just calming him down from the woes of the world that he experienced every day so he can continue putting his life on the line to take care of his family. We have totally taken the woman and put her in a different mentality, a different space and elevated her somewhere she doesn't need to be, somewhere she doesn't, she can't handle. I think you said this one time, you want all the rights and responsibilities of a man without the real responsibility or accountability of it. Women aren't keeping their families together. You have these high earning income or high income earning women, as I say, will destroy the family. I've said that because she leads with her pockets. She feels like she's in control just because she has money and can do whatever she wants to do. She's not stable. She has no discipline. She has no order. And that's in general, right? Now, when we address these things, you want to get mad because everyone wants independence. But all you got to do is look historically at how families go. If you give a man a job, he buys a house, gets a wife, they buy a car, and they assimilate into middle class America, right? More importantly, he's always going to fight fiercely for his family. And so if his job is ever like, uh, we're going to give you a pay cut, he'll go on strike to fight back against the company because he knows he has to feed his family. That's the responsibility of being a breadwinner. And so women, if you want equality, then you have to go and fight against our corporate bosses to make sure that we continue to get money so we can have a middle class family. Right. But but that's a lot to ask of you because you don't have the physical ability to go and demand that of anyone. Oh, you know what? 
You get mad, right? The whole world was designed by violence, but we act like violence is some type of terrible, terrible thing. No, 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 no. When I go and hunt a buffalo, I use the form of violence, but so we can eat, right? When, when the people come across the border, when the enemy is at the border, I don't mean immigrants. I mean like when Russia had uh, bombs in Cuba, yeah? The Cuban Missile Crisis. You want strong men to be able to go to Cuba to make sure that you don't get blown up. You want the police officer to come make sure that you and your family are safe. You want me to defend the home, right? But violence ain't selective. I can't turn off being no man. I'm always on. And so when they started, man, I played football. When they started to tell you that you couldn't run full speed and knock people's heads off, I'm like, you want me to be super fast, super powerful, and run as fast as I can and slow up? I said, what well, doesn't make any sense? That is a very feminine ideology. <laughs> the world's too easy. We live in a place where, you know, that direct deposit hit. You can go go on Sheen, load your cart up, wear what you want to wear. You can waltz on down in something skimpy uh, with no class and go get you a Nissan Maxima and hop in that. And you can have as many babies as you want because that's, the government will support is that you. that the baby mama starter kit? Yes, a baby mama starter kit. She you in know? Ultima. Yeah, I mean, you can take your little sons to Little League and find father figures for him instead of having a real father or husband around it's way too easy for them and then when we talk come right back there let's go no because i'm mad at some men some men they make me very angry because i'm a man and i got children and i don't want every time dick and harry to walk through the door and rub my sons on their head and say hi i'm uncle jojo i don't like that but guess what you men be doing you do that the woman got a three-year-old child a four-year-old child a ten-year-old child and you go over there and drop that cock in her and then you rub him on his head and you eat his snacks and you go away Hey, you don't, you're not going to be daddy. You're wrong for that. You, you know you're not going to be her husband, but she'll still go and, and, and contaminate that household with your, with your behavior. And that makes me angry because if we're going to hold each other accountable, then we have to be held accountable, right? And there's, a, there's, there's only a select few men out here just dropping cock like that. And so I'm just talking to a very few of you guys out there right. that are just abusing these women with your charm and your charisma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She could probably have some restraint. But everyone likes the great man when the handsome man, tall right. man, strong man walks in, talks to you so good. He's so nice. He got some money. You feel like this is real. But he's not. <laughs> and you know he's not. But there's there's just a discrepancy in our, in our society right now. Everyone's lost. <laughs> you don't know who you are. You ain't connected to your physical reality. And so since we ain't connected to no physical reality, we think this is all make pretend. No, no, no. There's real strong men out there. It's okay for you to be strong. Hey, dear women, it's okay for you to love your strong man. So I was, I have, I was having a conversation with a young lady. And I was, she was talking about, she was telling me, she's a black woman. And she was trying to tell me that it's European beauty standards and things of this nature, which is why that she can't find a man. And as she was saying this to me, man, like, I really cared about this person because she's a great person, a wonderful person. But as I'm looking at her, she had on, like, three-inch nails, and she had, like, 30-inch hair, and she had these very big eyelashes on, and she had stuff around her lips. And I was, and she had, you know, provocative clothing. And I never hid it, but she gave me all the signals of please hit it. I respected her too much to hit it. And when I didn't hit it, she looked at me like, why won't you hit it? Why don't you like me? Because the way that I show my love isn't taking advantage of your body, huh? D do you not know that? Women, don't you know that? That the way that I'm supposed to show love is to protect you and take care of you mentally, physically, emotionally. Yeah, I'm not supposed to just come and knock it off and leave. But that's the thing we've been saying this. This, is, this might be the, the 88th week we didn't say it. There's no promotion of family. People don't believe in marriage. Until we get it right, until we understand how we're supposed to roll, we're going to have these issues. Because it's funny that you said this woman is telling you that these beauty standards is what's preventing me from giving a man, but not realizing that you're doing all it is to leverage off your sex to get some affection. That shouldn't be what you're leading with. And women will do this. They, le they leverage their coochies off to get affection and thinking that that's how they're going to get the man. So you're leading with the wrong thing in the first place. This happens a lot. Then you got these simps that are getting them comment sections too and be like, this the divine queen. What's divine about that? <laughs> hey, let's end that too, man. I just told you, what do we ran around talking about? The white woman is God. The Asian woman is God. I mean, we would get so much flack for that, but you brothers do that with black women in I these mean, comments talking about the black woman is I, God. I don't want to be like so pushed back but I could sit there and say, since they are women, they have the ability to create life. Then, I mean, I guess that's Mother Earth in somehow, some way. Yeah, <laughs> but it takes two. Like, right, right, we, right. We, we were designed to come together to make this 
Okay, let's end the gender wars with this. I'm supposed to be able to appreciate women, man. I got to. I want to. We should be able to, and they should be able to appreciate us. And guess what? We need one another, but we need each other in different ways. We fulfill a role. We fulfill a certain role. It's just like a water hose. Can you put two male parts of the water hose together and get the water connectivity? No, you have to take the female in, take the male in, you screw it in, and you I'm, get connectivity. I'm going to create a special adapter so that you can put them both in. It's going to be a plastic coupling because I just think that I can do whatever I want to do. No, that, that that's how it is right now. Right, man. Any person who actually says that uh, that your the way you have sex is your identity, it's it's um, it is a mental illness. Like, come on, you know that you, yourself is more valuable than the way you have sex and who you have sex with. Right. My wife doesn't define me. My girlfriend doesn't define me. Are you crazy? The girl that I had sex with in third grade, I didn't have sex in the third grade. <laughs> that was dry humping. <laughs> but the first girl I lost my virginity to. She doesn't own my soul. She doesn't own my identity. She was a person that I met and we had a positive experience. And <clears throat> however we got to this place where we just started glorifying sex is this like some wonderful, magical thing. It's kind of dirty, kind of nasty. Are you, what kind of woman are you? Are you going to go get a warm rag and wipe me down? Do you want to be of service? Yeah. Or am I just sweating my butt off giving you these good old orgasms and you just going to lay there wetting, your, wetting on the sheets and I gotta get up and go get my go clean myself off, huh? I understand. I'm, when I'm when I'm saying these things, you probably never even thought about that because you've never been of service in your life, and maybe you never never met a man who made you want to be of service. That's possible. What I'm saying is, you chose him. Can can we can we acknowledge this? You choose a man, have his baby, then leave the man and blame him when you chose him. Okay. You, you said this. I want to ask you. So do you believe, who do you think chooses? Do you think the women choose men or men choose women? I can't take it or I'm a, I'm a bad person. She has to put herself in proximity from, like, however. Players get chose. Man, women, this is just life in general. Uh, women know they have this huge responsibility. They understand this. I'm about to carry a baby for nine months. I'm about to have to raise this baby for 18 years. This is a very critical decision. If you're making this critical, if you're being reckless with your coochie, then you need to reevaluate your life and make better decisions, huh? Choose some better D, huh? Choose some better men. Or just, hey, how about you say it? I don't want to say it because I live in the modern world and it seems so unreasonable. And if I meet you, you finna come off that cat in three dates because I'm, I'm, I'm grown. Right. That's, that's how now, it goes. Now, these are my standards, right? And guess what your standards should be? No. I'm not coming off this cat in three dates. And yes, I want to have a family. And yes, I want to marry you. Yes, I will submit to you. But hey, we finna learn each other. If you talk to me like that, I'm finna sit there and say, oh, shit. <laughs> I met a lady. <laughs> I met a lady. <laughs> if you tell me I'm intent, my intent is to be your woman, but I want to get to know you before you have my body, I'm finna say, wow. <laughs> You had a mama. You had a grandmama. Right? And that's the problem right there. <laughs> Let's look at, and, and when I talk about the modern woman, I'm talking boomer down. Have mothers really taught their daughters how to position themselves to be wives? No, because they resented the fact that they was of service to their husband. Exactly. And that's crazy because your husband provided the life that you have, the stability, the children. You got the American dream, but you, you heard the idea of equality. And you wanted, you wanted the prestige. Yeah. You wanted to be LeBron James. Steph Curry has this problem. She wants to be Steph so bad. And so she'll show her titties and defile his family just so she can say, get a like. And like, and I'm just, hey, being a woman is, is, is more powerful to be modest, right? Being a disciplined woman is extremely powerful. Because you can't, if you walk outside and you say, look at me, look at me, you can't stop nobody from taking it. But the only thing that you have is the moral appeal to the world. And you show that I'm a person of character. You don't want to defile me because God loves me. Huh? Women in the WNBA, the WNBA, obviously it's a woman's league, wants to be paid equal to NBA players without the financial justification. And that's being a woman in America right now. You want to be equal when you don't, you just want it for nothing. You feel like just for being there that you should have that level of equality when you don't even produce at that level. You're not even producing at that level. I really hate that we made women a subjugated group like black people. Like we 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 qualified that like we do race. And that is just the most ignorant thing on earth. And also to look <laughs> at you 
for your attributes is being weak when it's not. You serve a purpose. We serve purpose. And I like that you said that being in service to one another. Man, we have totally forgot about what that is. We don't even honestly forgot. We might be of the last generation that even understands that. And that's if you came up in a patriarch. It's a capitalistic uh, state of mind where I've traded off everything about me for money. Man, I used to play a game when I was a child, and they'll say, man, would you do this for $1,000? Man, I wouldn't do that for $1,000. Would you do it for a million dollars? Man, I wouldn't do that for a million dollars. Most of the time, these questions were intimate in nature, and there was probably a homoerotic in nature, and most of the time, young boys would be like, I would never, right? This was the topic of conversation, but all of a sudden, culture has shifted in such a way where it's like an honor to be a degenerate. Right. And and I don't even understand this. But if we push back and just be good men, then maybe we, we can change this a little bit. I know what I, I believe about being a powerful man. And maybe that conversation should be had and behind closed doors, with other powerful men. Because when I say it out loud, then all of a sudden she hears it and she's like, I want to do it, too. I want to do it, too. Man, you ain't supposed to do it. And so maybe I should just hold it. That's why they that's why they had uh, lodges where men would go and, and, and engage and. And, and stiff drink and partake in harsh conversation because you don't need to know what I'll be doing and how we be doing it. Because you don't need to live like that. You don't need to be no debaucherous ass creature. Let me handle that. I- I'm King David and I'll negotiate with God <laughs> on your behalf. And how is society looking with women being equal to men? It's, look at it. <laughs> They're not having babies. They're not having families. It's, it's, it's so much homosexuality. It's turned into a religion. And for me to say that out loud... Man, there's no way that the way that I have sex is supposed to be the the whole conversation. That's nuts. It used to be like, what do you do for a living? <laughs> right. And now it's, what are your pronouns? Let's go back to asking me what I do for a living. And maybe that's an economic response also because no one wants to talk about what they're doing for a living because lots of us are in this gig economy working 1099. <laughs> it's a reality. What we consider to be free and equal women are perverse debaucherous characters and you see that in our society right now you see it just being able to wear with i was in katie mills mall and i seen a chick with her baby with it looked like panties pretty much i mean it was shorts but walking they looked like pan- walking around in lingerie with a baby pushing a stroller and i think her man was with her so that's even weak of him to even allow this like there's a study man, was- don't you I, my woman can wear anything nah. she wants. There was a study. There, uh, there's a lady. <laughs> and then, then want to shoot you when you look. When men look at women like that, the part of a man's brain that goes off that that concerns tools is what highlights when he sees a woman naked that Do you way. know how cowardly that is? Because, like, men, we, we've promoted this idea that masculinity is supposed to be fighting other men or something like this. You know, like, like men are in competition with each other. But men are supposed to work in collaboration with each other to, to build society. This is teamwork, yeah? Like, this is probably inappropriate for me to say, but we share stories. We all know that you're giving it up. And we all ain't going to date you. We just know that you have the free will to bang all of us. And maybe we all might bang you and send you on your way, right? This is honesty. You don't want to be passed around like that. We don't want to pass you around like that. But this is when you create this idea that you can do anything that you want. And you can. You have the right to destroy your life. And you will. <laughs> You're doing it right now. <laughs> she give away the cookie and say this. He was a bad guy. You better get some, you better get some good nigga radar. <laughs> I've said this and I've asked because the comment section, y'all, we, that, that's, what, that's the market. Y'all help us thrive with all the w- wacky things y'all say. And I ask time after time after time and after time to women, why have you not required marriage before a man put his penis in you? And, and unanimously, it's because I'm grown. Not everybody has to be married. But you're complaining about uh, when things go sour or south and you've had this baby with somebody you don't want to be with. Now you're complaining about no. it. What's going on with that? There was bra- if I say that you were brainwashed, we accept that. Well, you say- Oprah brainwashed you. Ellen brainwashed you. Ricky Lake brainwashed you. So before it was Instagram, it was daytime television. Mm. And so you would sit there on the gossip channels and you would gossip amongst your friends. And that was the conversation about what he ain't going to do and what he didn't do and how you going to change it. And that gossip, it made housewives have a revolution and they started divorcing their husbands all across America. 
housewives started divorcing their husbands because they was tired of their husbands going and playing golf. They was tired of their husbands buying them Kenmores and appliances and station wagons. They wanted to go to work too. And so you flooded the economy with cheap labor and now we got all the wages are depressed and we can't, we ain't got two, two parent households no more because you wanted so badly to be equal. <clears throat> Who the hell wants to go to work? Women are at work right now trying to figure out how to find a man to get off the job. Like we like to pr play pretend raising children is, is a task. It, it requires is. energy and responsibility. You got to be diligent. It is. And women act like, I just, nobody wants to do hard things by themselves. Nobody does. It's like, it's weird because you just won't tell the truth. All you got to do is be honest and say, hey, hey, this child is a handful. He needs his dad. I'll behave. I'm going to tell you something else. I'll behave. Can you say that woman? <laughs> Open your mouth. Say, I'll behave. I, I was bad. I'm sorry. Oh, man. Oh, I Asking a woman to say I'm sorry is like giving garlic to a vampire. It's just like, oh, man. They... She, she going to say I'm sorry. I want you to say the more important words. I'll behave. I, I'm not your child. I'll behave. You said something keto. We have traded off morals and character for money. We sold ourselves. We're the best prostitutes when in the history of the world. When you listen to everyone speak, but especially women in regards to relationships, the most important thing to them is money. My dad told me. My dad was a truck driver for 50 years. My dad told me, he said, I'd rather pelt myself than pelt my wife. He said, when I go out here to work for this man, this man finna tell me what I got to do. And I don't want no man telling my wife what she got to do. So I'll go do that. He said, I'll bite that bullet. That's my dad. That's a man. To make sure that I'm going to do whatever is required to sustain my situation. Now, my dad happened to live in a generation where that was collectively the ethos of men. I don't live in that generation. When I talk like this to some men, some men look at me and be like, but what about women? And I'll be like, nigga, I'm talking to you. Why are you talking about a woman? I get angry whenever any person who's not of that group of people starts defending that group of people. Like, if you're not a homosexual, don't talk to me about homosexuals. If you're not black, don't talk to me about black. Right. If you ain't no man, please do not think that you can tell me anything about what it means to be a man. Because I'm willing to put my life on the line for this. Not for your idea, but for what I believe. And that's power. And I need 10 million men in America to embrace this power. It's time to be powerful. They can only do what you allow them to do. And when I say they, I mean the government. I mean women. I mean children. If your children are bad, it's because you've been a bad dad. If your wife ain't behaving, it's because you're a bad man. If your government is stealing money, it's because you've been a bad citizen. God damn it. Be a good person, huh? Fight back. Be the greatest American alive. Facts. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive.